What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another Football Manager 2020 Let's Play and it's episode number 5 here at Liverpool. We start on the profile of James Milner. You might think that's a bit random. It's not. This guy has been the bane of my blooming existence. He has been complaining about lack of first team football despite being listed as a fringe player. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. We've agreed for him to be a regular starter. He's actually been a fringe player for us. He's not been very happy about the amount of football he's been playing, and he's just been upset, and he's caused me a load of problems because we've had a mini riot to suppress. And I guess I guess we have kind of done it, of course. Dynamic's a very big thing in Football Manager. The only player we ever have unhappy at the club is James Milner. I've really been making a conscious effort to rotate the squad to keep people happy. You can see... The atmosphere is great. The managerial support is great. Everyone is loving me. I'm loving them. And then there's just James crying in his corner on his own. Wijnaldum and Oxlade-Chamberlain don't agree with him. No one agrees with him. I am trying to appease him a little bit by giving him a little bit more football. You can see he is pleased with the playing time he's getting as of late. That's because we've had to rotate things around. We are, of course, heading into December as well. It's the crazy month in the Premier League. It's the month where teams end up playing six or seven matches. So he will get some game time. But even in our rotated teams, I haven't been giving him too many opportunities. His contract's up at the end of the year. I'm probably going to let him go in a free. The other player, of course, in a similar situation, I guess, is Adam Lallana. He's good. He's not great, though, you know. He, he, he kind of does a job without being super standout. He's been a good, reliable backup, I guess, at the very least. You can see, to be fair, in the few games we've given him in the Champions League, he's done quite well. His playing time has been emergency backup, and, yeah, a year left on his contract, probably not going to renew, much, much like Milner. He's an OK player, but definitely, definitely overpaid. But, yeah, besides those two players, to be honest, the squad has been rotated quite heavily. Goldson obviously came in to be an emergency backup. Naby Keita has not really kicked on as I would like. But outside of them and perhaps Shakiri, who we couldn't register for the Champions League just due to the requirements that we had to fit within, the rest of the squad's been getting a decent amount of football. You can see Origi's been given chances but hasn't really set the world alight. Right now, I feel like the striking position is somewhere where I would like to get in a slightly more reliable player, a player who we have on the bench and I can have confidence is going to come on and be an impact player. I guess much like Origi is in real life. You look at him here, don't get me wrong, he's not a bad player. But he's not incredible. You know, he's not a scary prospect to have on the bench. Someone who is going to strike fear into the heart of defenders. Um, and he hasn't really shown any of that. But yeah, you can see the rest of the team's played a decent amount. Even players like Troost Ekong. You know, we brought him in. I know a lot of people raised their eyebrows when we picked him up. He's played two games in the league and not done too well. But in other competitions, he's done exceptionally well. You can see here, Champions League is 7.73 average rating. He's played three matches. The reason he's played so much in the Champions League is because it's been plain sailing as of late as well. If we do just have a look at our results. Since your last year, of course, we took on Manchester City. Following on from that, we've played four games we've won four games uh, we started off with a win against locomotive moscow winaldum and matip with the goals in that one we then beat crystal palace away from home three goals early on in the first half set us on our way danny olmo with a very late goal as well in the 91st minutes uh well complete the route and then following on from that two games that we will look at the highlights for because i feel like they were kind of interesting games the first was against napoli it was at home in the champions league we knew at this point we were already through to the knockout stages with four wins in our first four games a win here or even a draw was going to guarantee us that top spot and we ran riot it was great to see they actually got an early goal in this game and for much of the first half we were second best but we really did step it up as the game progressed you can see the stats in the bottom left we were absolutely nuts. Uh, Jordan Henderson with a fantastic little effort for us. Milner then of all people from the penalty spot and in the second half it was Oxley chamberlain with a goal in the 63rd minute. Always good to see him getting a goal. Um, of course in real life he's been scoring a lot of bangers as of late and he's been chipping in with a few here for us. And then Danny Olmo much like in the previous game where he got the last goal of the game he got it here ghosting around at the back post. No one picked him up. Keeper questionably came out and he slotted it away really really nicely uh, Alan was sent off in this game for a second yellow card um, for the penalty decision just before half time which definitely made our job easier anyway the other game we had was against Wolverhampton Wanderers this was the most recent one and again very very good results and another one where Jordan Henderson opened up the goal scoring for us in the second minute definitely better than the previous one this goal straight into that top corner Dybala saw Henderson's goal and I think he just took inspiration he scored a superb little free kick 
with his wand of a left foot. And then Trent Alexander-Arnold wanted to get in on the action. The ball switched from over on the left-hand side by Robertson, if I'm not mistaken. It fell to Alexander-Arnold. Nicely tucked away. And then a weird goal for the fourth goal that happened before half-time and, well, was the last goal that we had of the game. Um, yeah, Origi's header too hot to handle, I will claim. I think in reality it's just weird match engine shenanigans Rui Patricio doesn't know where his goal is he carried it into his goal 4 nil it finished we're not going to complain one little bit anyway if we just look at the Premier League table you can see teams really have dropped off the pace as of late Manchester City's form has been awful ever since they played us they've really really struggled you can see they've drawn against United they've lost against Arsenal I guess in isolation they're not the worst results in the world but when you consider they lost to us as well they've slipped up and dropped a lot of points as of late um, which is always interesting. And then if we just look at other teams around us, United have actually come on a little bit and started to get a bit stronger. Chelsea have fallen away, but actually it's Arsenal who currently sit joint top with us on 32 points after 13 matches, of course. Arsenal we have already played this year. We played them after the United game. I decided not to commentate this game just because at the time they were in fourth. I didn't really think that Arsenal were going to be our big rivals. As things are turning out right now, they look like they could be the team that we are going to have to deal with. And we have got to play them in not too longer a period of time. It's going to be on the 15th of January. You can see here the World Club Championship has been penciled in. Um, it's going to be happening right before Christmas, which is, of course, exactly when we want to play. Assuming we do make it into the final of that competition, we will be playing nine matches in a month. So... Yeah, there's going to be plenty of rotation. Milner's going to get that football he is craving. And maybe Connor Goldson will get an appearance or two. Of course, he was really just brought in as an emergency backup. But, um, yeah, I want to claim he's done a great job since he joined us. He hasn't because he's just not played. Anyway, in terms of what the board are saying about us, of course, we've been at the club a decent period of time now. They're getting a feel for exactly how things are going. You can see... Happy with how we're going, delighted with the attacking football, delighted with the entertaining football as well. We have been, you know, scoring goals for fun, of course. Um, you can see here, satisfied with our kind of goal, you know, of signing under uh, a well under 23-year-olds for the first team. Elsewhere, we're working within the wage budget. We are still on course to get to the Champions League semi-finals. We have now definitely won our group. And winning the Premier League is still very much, you know, a, a, a real possibility, I guess, at this point. You can see, very, very happy in general, with lots of bits, but the club vision is looking superb. If we look at match performances, just lots of A's here. that I, I really have enjoyed with FM20 coming to this screen and then just enjoying reading, you know, the exact positive and negative breakdowns. You can see a distinct lack of negatives here, um, but then you look at the amount of gut shots we're having every game. It's kind of crazy. We didn't actually have as many against Palace as some of these other matches. I think 46 might be our record. Um, I still think the FM match engine needs a little bit of work, but right now we're reaping the rewards, I guess, of how it wants you to play. You can see here how the fans and the board f uh, are rating our transfers. Connor Goldson is the one that's a big fat F, but outside of him, largely, you know, reasonably positive. Uh, Dabal has been absolutely incredible, as you would hope. Um, they're really happy with Danny Olmo, particularly the fans. And uh, they're happy, actually, with Henriks to have been proven wrong. I know the board still aren't too happy for him, but he's been a really, really good backup for us. I can't stress how difficult it can be to get that, you know, second choice right back and left back option, that player who's going to be on the bench for us. And actually, it's been this guy who's been one, of, been one of the big reasons why James Milner hasn't played as much. This guy started four Premier League games out of 13 for a backup player, you know, second fiddle in the pecking order. He's, he's done very well for us. I really, really rate him as well. We're training him to play left back, but yeah, you're not going to get much better of kind of backup option on the bench. You can play a real variety of positions compared to Benjamin Henricks here. So um, yeah, I really can't stress it enough. I, I'm, I'm becoming a big fan of his. And, uh, you know, he really does deserve his spot on the bench. Anyway, one other bit of news before we get into today's game, which is going to be against Chelsea. And I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get the news item for this. But we are leaving the EU. Brexit has happened. And it's happening on the 31st of December 2020, um, which is still a year away. But that, that's the way these things happen. Brexit's still ongoing in real life. I'm not going to get into politics, but it's... It's a bit of a shit show, isn't it? Um, but you can see here, pardon my French, uh, you can see here um, there's going to be a new registration rule basically brought in where you have to use seven, well, you have a limit of 17 foreign players um, and players homegrown in nation do not need to be registered. That's going to be an interesting little rule. 
really interesting actually because we have a few players homegrown in nation but that's definitely going to make things kind of flexible and maybe mean that having a slightly bigger squad is quite workable but um yeah we'll have to see how that plays out for us but i do think that those rules are going to be quite good for us longer term of course not coming in for a year but um yeah w worth having on the radar at the very least you can see here if we just look at the youth development center harvey Ele uh, elliot has been absolutely superb um, we're currently actually training him to play as an advanced playmaker down the middle. You can see here he really ticks a lot of boxes. When you start a save game, um, he can play naturally or competently on the right and left-hand side. We've trained him to play down the middle because I genuinely think that's where he plays best. And uh, his development has been superb. The other player we've got is Kayana Hoover. I don't think I've said his name correctly there, but this guy is exciting. Um, I should be training him to play left-back if I'm not already. We're training him to play right back. I'm going to train you to play left back as well because this guy, much like Henricks, I can envisage being that very, very versatile defensive option. Um, obviously, he can already semi play left back, so we're not going to be too detrimental to his current ability by training him in another position. But you can see here the improvements have been superb. And if we look at the kind of um, overall ability progression graph, we've had this lovely little spike as of yet, uh, or uh, as of late rather. Um, but yeah, he's just improving a lot i love this new progression system with these graphs they're just satisfying to look at you know it gets me excited i see a player get a little spike up and i'm thinking oh i need to i need to see exactly how they're getting on of course we haven't got any news on our youth candidates yet but if i'm not mistaken this starts to update around december so come next episode we may well have a load of news regarding the next generation of liverpool players to look forward to Anyway, shall we get into today's game? It's against Chelsea. Full strength team is on show, which is great. A few players lacking a little bit of fitness. Um, the Wolverhampton Wanderers game was only half a week ago. And you can see following on from this game, we've got games against Newcastle, Bayer and Norwich. Worth noting that game against Bayer in the Champions League is a nothing game as far as we're concerned. We've already won our Champions League group. So I will probably just play a B team in that game and not worry about it too much. You know, we can have a little bit of focus on the upcoming league game games which is good news you know it, it uh, the champions league is always a bit tricky it's in an ideal world you know you have it wrapped up as early as you can and we've managed to do that and it means that now going into this period where if you're not doing so well in the group stage it can be a bit of a crunch period where you know your season in terms of league games is really ramping up you can um well have some problems and with us now being able to focus on the league that's hopefully going to benefit us quite a lot um i realize here I accidentally skipped all the pre-game stuff. My mouse sometimes double clicks. So we'll sort that all out quickly as Firmino heads it wide. But yeah, let's see how we get on here. Away from home against Chelsea. Not going to be easy, but so far we are on top. And Van Dijk leaps like a salmon. Unfortunately, he heads the ball into plan B. Um, yeah, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't quite get it on target there. What is Alisson going to do for us? He's been great, by the way, Alisson, since he's come back. I really can't pick too many faults in his play. We've not been amazing defensively, but when you look at the league and the fact that so far this season there's been one game all year where we've not scored, it's hard to be too critical of our attacks. And maybe you look at our defence and go, maybe you could do more. Although, I don't know, when you look at the style of football we play, when you look at the formation we've been playing and the success we've been having with it, um, I think you kind of have to accept that you are going to leave yourself open at the back as Firmino has kind of a chance here, dealt with initially, unselfishly tried to you know keep the ball alive and keep the attack alive, unfortunately just couldn't quite pick out a man and well, with the initial chance squandered we couldn't make anything more of it. Ball switched here to Robertson now, plays it to Dybala who really has become that all important player in our team. I feel like the dream I had in my mind as we came into FM20 of kind of having the four musketeers up front, it's become a reality. It really has. Um, I know last episode I talked about the Firmino departure um, being an like a thing. Uh, I have been looking to renew his contract as Salah scores against his former club. But yes, with Firmino, little update. Um, I went to offer him a new contract just to see if he was interested in renewing. You know, you've got PSG interested, Thiago Silva's coming out in the press. He's told me, yeah, Gaffer, sorry, not interested in signing a new deal. He's got four years left on his current contract. The media have been quoting PSG, uh, potentially being willing to offer £108 million. I know a lot of people are kind of like, no, you can't sell Firmino. But to me, I feel like £108 million for a 28-year-old striker. And don't get me wrong, I will try and squeeze every last penny out of PSG. 
but it might be a little bit difficult to ignore if it came in. And I have been making a short list, a draft list of kind of players who could be the successor. And that these are successors both in the mindset of do we want to bring in a striker to replace him, but also um, if we did let him go and maybe move Dybala up into the striker position, who could come in and be that new playmaker for us? In short term, I don't think we'll sell Firmino. It would take an extraordinary offer in January for me to sell him to PSG. I don't really like selling my best players halfway through a season, particularly when our season's going as well as it is right now. And, you know, Firmino is a critical part of that. But it is a niggling doubt in the back of my mind, and I feel like it would be foolish not to plan for it. I know I'll forget the end of the episode, so I'll quit. I'll, you know, while we're at half time and all the players are waiting for me to do a talk to them. I can show you the shortlist here, just so you can kind of see some of the players we're considering. You know, Haaland's in there, Eduard's in there, Martinez, you know, a few traditional strikers. Right now, actually, the players I'm leaning most towards are Lotaro Martinez or maybe Gabriel um, Jesus, who's just not been given any game time yet at, at Man City this year. They've just not played him. You can see here he's barely touched the ball. I wonder if he'd get unhappy if we could get him for a discounted price. That's what I'm thinking. I think, for me personally, Martinez is looking like probably the more attractive player. He's Argentine as well, so you could have a really good link with Dybala, I'm thinking, down the middle. But that's kind of planning and fantasizing a little bit further ahead. We'll cross that bridge when we get there and if the bid even comes in. But, yeah, I can't stress it enough. I feel like planning is always just so, so important in Football Manager. You know, scouting... All the players with contracts expiring at the end of the year, eight months from the end of the season. So when that six-month window opens where anyone outside of English clubs who has a contract running out, you can offer a contract to to sign for a free. You know, having that knowledge already built up of them is always important. But even, you know, when it just comes to players that you know you might be willing to sell, just, you know, possible replacements. Really, I should be looking at fullbacks as well. Not that I intend to send sell Trent or um, Robertson, but... It's just sensible to plan for every possibility. And, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I probably... Fullback's a terrible example because I don't think we need to scout fullbacks. But I think you get the general gist of what I'm trying to say. Basically, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I don't know who said that, but it sounds wise and it stuck with me. <laughs> it's definitely a, a mentality I take into Football Manager. Just plan for every eventuality. I will say, with the tactical system we're using, I've not touched it since we took over. I've not tweaked anything. Um, I was a little bit concerned we might get caught out on the break, and we do occasionally, but teams don't really punish us that much. We don't give up a lot of opportunities. I feel like with the fullbacks on attack, they get forward, but because they're fullbacks in terms of their role and not wingbacks, they actually are quite sensible about getting back into defensive positions and becoming, you know, a block of four with the two centre-backs. Oh, my word. Um, mm. We've had some incredible goals in this series so far. That's another one. Mo Salah. Can we discuss that? Can we discuss that for a second? Mane with the ball through, but this finish is stupid. He has chipped the keeper from 20 yards out. And I'm not even mad. That is absolutely incredible by Salah. Uh, I rate that massively. That is just a very, very cheeky effort that puts us two goals to the good. Away from home against Chelsea. Chelsea are in third. They're a good team this year. And right now we've looked, well, just better than them. Henderson's had a bit of a meh game in the midfield. So you know what? We'll bring in Wijnaldum there. Part of me's like, maybe I should just bring in Milner just to keep him happy. Even if I intend on selling him at the end of the year, um, he is a highly influential player in the dressing room. It hasn't really spread too much, to be honest, because of how well everything on and off the pitch has been going outside of James Milner's little midlife crisis that he's going through on the verge of his retirement. But um, no, you know what? Let's give him some game time. Give him a chance to shine. Maybe he'll do something incredible, as unlikely as that might seem. Anyway, Robertson out here on the left crosses it in. Can't quite pick out his man, and now he's with Jorginho. He gives it back to Rudiger, who switches it to hudson Adoy, Brings it forward. Now with Tammy Abraham. Milner wins it and then blocks Van Dijk's clearance. And, well, it nearly cost us. Fortunately for us, Mason Mounts skewed his shot wide. Firmino's not been too great today. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to move Dybala up and then we're going to bring in, I think, Danny Olmo to play the advanced playmaker. Of course, we have got Olmo in our team as well. If we were to sell Firmino, we don't actually have to buy someone. We do have, 
you know, the option of playing Olmo at advanced playmaker. But Olmo, he's not been bad as a kind of off-the-bench player age 21, but he's not set the world alight as Kovacic scores a silly goal. <laughs> that is a little bit odd, but fair play. Long-range effort. Lands in. He picks up the ball keenly. I mean, I guess with the limited time left, we should probably shout at the players to tighten up. But yeah, Danny Olmo, fantastic little playmaker. I kind of like him as the backup option just because he can play anywhere across the attacking midfielders, you know. He's just a very, very versatile option. You can see he's been improving a lot as well. Anyway, late chance here. Tomori scored his offside. Thank you, VAR, for disallowing that goal with thirty, well, a minute and 30 seconds left. There's now 30 seconds left of the game and another highlight playing. We cannot collapse here, can we? I blooming hope not. We had this last game as well. Can you remember it went down to like, is there going to be a highlight at the end? Kepa clears the ball. Now with Tamori, who really has impressed me actually this year in real life. He gets dispossessed by Mane. Olmo with it. Just no, no nonsense here. That's got to be the game, right? Put us out of our misery, ref. You're leaving me stressed here. We're actually going to a VAR replay here of that disallowed goal. It, it was offside. Fair play, ref. You've made the right decision there. And 2-1 it finishes. That was a weird end to the game, wasn't it? Anyway, superb. You can see here, everyone very, very happy. James Milner apparently frustrated at the feedback. I guess that's for me shouting tighten up at the end of the game when we conceded and lost our two-goal lead. It, it got a little squeaky bum time, didn't it, for a second? We've achieved the achievement. You're on fire. Is that 10 games won in a row? I think it is. And 10 games won in a row in all competitions is really, really good. Definitely happy about that. Not the crazy goal scoring that we've been used to in that 2-1 win, but hey, we, we got the job done and Salah's superb finishing was actually the difference maker. He's opposed... I don't want to say he's disappointed me this year, but he's not been... He has been incredible, but he's not been that kind of, oh my gosh, he's the best player in the world level of incredible. You know, he's not st stood out head and shoulders above everyone else, although that's kind of difficult, I feel like, to do with the world-class attack we have. But, um, no, he, he has been superb. You can see here, Dybala leads the goal scoring. Then it is Salah now. And if we look at average rating, Salah does have the highest average rating, to be fair. Robertson, by the way, 10 assists. Not bad for a left-back, if you ask me. Trent on the other side, lagging a little bit behind. If you're a fantasy Premier League owner in this football manager universe that I'm managing in, I can only really apologise. I'm, I'm sorry that it's a one-man show with the left-back doing all the work for us. But anyway... That's going to wrap us up for today, folks. We are going to be capping things off there. I think next time we'll be back will be for the World Club Championship final if I decide it's an interesting game. We'll see who we get drawn against. It's going to be coming your way just before Christmas. We should know a little bit more about our potential youth intake, so that will be exciting. And in the meantime, there's still a few fairly big games for us that I am very, very keen to win. So yes, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Do drop a like if you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you again next time. And uh, yeah, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.